Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Cody Crowley versus Jerome Boots Ennis, that could be the next fight. And I'm not just sitting here throwing crap to the wind. I'm not just having a conversation. I'm being serious as a heart attack right now. Please subscribe to the channel if it's your first time. I'm not going to give you boring content. I'm not a bandwagonist. We have conversations. Boom. So look, right now, you got to watch. See, if you don't pay attention to, to these rankings and how they're jostling these fighters, man, and depending on who they want to have in one, two, three, four, five, who they want to have one and two, then all of a sudden number one and two become vacant. Those fighters drop down in the ranking stack or they overall just disappear from the rankings, right? If you don't keep up with that, none of it's going to make sense to you. And you can't intelligently speak on uh, what could be coming. But over here at this channel, we like to sit back, do a deep dive analysis to, to try to predict uh, the future. So it's a little bit of uh, uh, predictive analysis uh, or descriptive analysis, predictive analysis, and then uh, prescriptive analysis going on here. So, so, so what I'll describe to you is there's a lot going on in the welterweight division. Uh, Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford, if you've been sleeping underneath the rock, uh, Crawford's the undisputed. Now you got the, uh, the rematch that looms. Will it happen? Who knows? See, uh, uh, Steven Espinosa, he's been out here on his secret squirrel mission talking in code. The one thing he said that got my attention, right, it's actually two things. One is he didn't really like the idea of Terrence Crawford possibly pushing the fight, the rematch with Earl Spence at 147. Uh, forcing Earl Spence to, of course, get down to a weight that it seems that Earl Spence just isn't comfortable. And he didn't like the idea, if he goes that direction by forcing Earl Spence to fight at 147, he thinks it's kind of kind of corny for Terrence Crawford to then be cool with going up at 168 and challenging Ter uh, Canelo Alvarez. So his thing is, if you can go all the way up and challenge Canelo, why not just fight at 154? Now, it's not my understanding is Crawford hasn't made a decision on whether he wants to fight at 147 or 154. But listening to Espinosa is the 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 weight uh, the weight issue could be a deal breaker. So I'm not holding my breath on Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford and that rematch happening. I'm not. To make matters worse, uh, you see that now PBC has to find a new home. Showtime, you know, Showtime boxing has come to an end. Like, that's no longer a rumor. Like, that's been confirmed. Uh, and to further exacerbate the issue, we, you know, don't have anything definitive on what our Hammond's next move is. There's a lot of talks about, hey, could go to the zone, could go to Amazon Prime, could go to YouTube. Hell, it could just go away. And now all of his fighters are just in the breeze like they were at MTK Global. And some guys may end up over there in Saudi Arabia <laughs> trying to get some of that desert money, right? Desert diamonds, you know what I'm saying? But in all seriousness, I'm going to tell you why we need to look at Cody Crowley versus Jerome Boutsinis. Now, I'm not just, look, I'm going to show you why. Uh, let me go here, and let me go here. When you, let me make this a little bit, well, first, before I do that, let me show you this, okay? Um, where is it? Where is it? Right here. Okay, let me show you this, Okay. Let's take a look at this real quick. So, oh, let me come over here. Uh, so this is Cody Crowley. 22 wins, 9 KOs, right? No losses. Cody Crowley can fight, man. He's going to come. He's going to fight. That man's throwing like 60, 70 punches around. But the problem is he doesn't really have the pop. He'll just overwork you, overwhelm you. He reminds me of an Earl Spence. Matter of fact, he fights exactly like Earl Spence to me. He just, he just not as polished and doesn't have the same snap on his punches. But when you look at the fact that Cody Crowley just went um, and fought Abel Ramos, who's a tough fight, earlier this year, and he got a majority decision with a fight he almost lost because he got smoke knocked out of him in that last round. So he almost got knocked out in that fight. Kind of makes it hard for me to sit here and believe that he's going to present any kind of challenge to Jerome Boots in this, okay? Cody Crowley, those come forward fighters, that style is perfectly suited for those killers like Terrence Crawford and Jerome Boussinis. Like, that's what they want. Even Keith Thurman would have a field day with Cody Crowley. You can't chase behind no counter puncher, heavy handed, slick, boxer puncher, counter puncher who can, who can punch while moving. And that's the problem. And they switch it. So even if for some reason you figure out 
one style of Jerome Boots in this. He's got, he's got layers for you. And the man can fight. And I'm going to tell you right now, in my opinion now, this is why I'm giving you my opinion. Roman Villa was more polished of a fighter than, than Cody Crowley. And, 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 I'm, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I think he was tougher. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not taking nothing from Cody Crowley. Cody Crowley can scrap. He's just not beating Jerome Boots in this. I think Jerome Boots in this knocks him out in three rounds. Maybe four, because he's tough. But within four rounds, I think the Canadian gets knocked out. But what I'm going to tell you about the uniqueness of all this, right? Now, let me go back to where I was at. You know, the uniqueness to all this is when you take it, let me make this a little bit smaller for you now, okay? You see, I'm always out here doing shit. Let me show y'all something. Make this a little bit bigger. Let me widen this up. All right. So, so, so check out the racking stack, right? When it comes to the ring rankings, you know, Crawford is the man. Earl Spence is still number one. Look where Boots Tennis is. He's number two. Virgil Ortiz, three. I don't know why they have him still in the rankings, but whatever. He should be fighting at 154 because this man almost died uh, with, with his uh, condition, you know. Then Stan Eunice is number four. Roach is number five, which Roach has kind of fought himself up to that position. Uh, Crowley's number six. Van he I don't know how he's still there, but he has a fight coming up too. Van Asien does. He's seven. Giasov, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know who that is. Then Barrios and Villa. But this needs to be updated, obviously. But when you come and you look here in this red, the, the, the column with the red heading, it says IBF, 13 October. Look at what we got. You got Terrence Crawford. Then underneath him is Boots. They, we all know Boots wants the Crawford fight, but he's got to stay busy. The number one is vacant. The number two is vacant under the IBF. The number three is Cody Crowley. Jerron Boots in this is more than likely going to fight Cody Crowley. Cody Crowley is in a good space. Look over to the left under the WBO, the purple heading. You got Terrence Crawford, and you got Alexis Rocha, who's a mandatory, but Rocha is fighting this weekend, right against Santian, which is not an easy fight for Rocha. But then Cody Crowley's at number two. So what you're seeing now that Rocha is fighting is Cody Crowley is, 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 is there for an opportunity for something big. It could be Rashidi Ellis, who's now number three. But you come back to the IBF, and you're going to see Cody Crowley and Boots Ennis. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a doable fight. But Boots Ennis may feel like he's moving down the ladder, and he doesn't want to reverse. He wants to keep moving up the ladder. And a fight with Cody Crowley, he may frown upon that because he really feels, hey, I should be fighting Crawford. But you know what, Boots Ennis? Well, get over it because Rocha deserves a fight too, and so does Stanley Eunice, and none of them are getting the fight. And you won't get the fight as long as Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence are going to keep going back and forth. Uh, and, and trying to make the rematch, so you know you got to stay busy. So let's let's take the take take a stay busy fight, but don't take it to the stupid. Then you got Mario Barrios, who's fought himself into a great position, but he just fought, so I can't see Crowley and Barrios getting getting mixed up. Uh, Yugas just fought, so you, you got Crowley at number three here for the for the W the number one for the WBC, and then over here the number three for the IBF, but it's vac the number one and two for the IBF is vacant. I think Crowley's going to get boots in this, man. I really think Cody Crowley's going to get boots in this. I'm being honest with you. When you come over here to the WBA, is Crowley even in there? Yeah, he's there at number seven. But, you know, when we really look at this racking stack, Cody Crowley is in a very good position for a step-up fight. When I say step-up, means he could be going up against oh, one of these top ten guys, man. It could be a Yugas. It could be... A top five guy could be Boots Ennis. Who knows what's going to happen, but he's got to want to stay active. But, you know, we just got to wait and see if it's going to happen this year, next year. It seems like Showtime's already has the remaining of the year fights planned out. And as a result, I'm not very confident Crowley's going to be in the ring this year. But starting off next year, man, I can see that it's, it kicks off with him definitely in a big fight. And I think it's going to be Boots Ennis. That's a big name for Boots. And basically, they're going to sell it as Boots is fighting an undefeated fighter. But what they're not going to sit there and really t tell you too much about is that this uh, this guy that he's fighting, Cody Crowley, it only has nine KOs out of his 22 wins and has a 40% KO ratio. But he's going to come straight forward. He's southpaw, and he's going to make it interesting. I just think he won't, he may make it interesting, but he won't make it past the fourth round. And I'm just being quite frank with you, okay? But that being said, for Boots in this, let me tell you, I don't feel bad for Boots in this. I don't feel bad for Stan Eunice. I don't feel bad for Rocha. Uh, the one person I'm wondering about is Boutier. What the hell happened to Boutier? If anybody know? That man went missing like Dillian White went missing after Dillian White fled. 
after Dillian White failed that drug test, didn't he? The damn secret society man pulled them boys under, didn't they? They're not letting them come up for any air. But that being said, Boots in this, he may be the next best thing at 147, man. He just needs his opportunity. Let's go back and look at this, man, because let's go back and look. They need to update this stuff, man. But when you look at what's going on here, okay, what's really there for Boots in us to fight? Let's be real. What, who, what, when, where, why, how is there for Boots in us to fight? You know, he won't get any credit if he was to fight Spence, even at 154. Boots won't get any credit. None at all. Ortiz Jr., that's a good fight for Boots at 154. But Boots is trying to do work at 147. But Ortiz Jr. can scrap. Stan Yunus, he would get credit for that if Thurman don't destroy Stan Yunus. Rocha, he could get credit for that. But Rocha's fighting, so timeline's not going to match up. Crowley, he would get credit for that. Uh, Avanasian, I don't know, man, if he'll get credit for that. Giasov, like I said, I don't know anything about Giasov. Barrios, hey, that, he will get credit for that. Let me tell you, Barrios ain't no joke, man. Y'all out here talking about people out here getting mad at me because I said Barrios, uh, Barrios will give um, Boots problems. People out here, you don't know anything about boxing. Uh, kill yourself. It's like, yo, my man, I just said something you don't agree with. Now you want me to get a bottle of rat poison and bring it all to an end? Hold your horses, don't take it to the stupid. I'm not drinking rat poison because you don't agree with me, Bozo McGee. Now, back to what I was saying with Mario Barrios. He's not the same 140 pounder. This man was killing us up to get with a 140. He bought Javante Davis. Everybody like, eh, damn, he couldn't even beat a small Javante. Barrios wasn't allowed to rehydrate and he should have never been at that weight. He just dropped back down to make that two, three, four million. You say, how do you know what he got paid? Stay out the man's pocket. Because I'm right out here in the same place this man is from. And I know people who know him, and they told me. So get out of here, all right? But uh, what I'm going to tell you now, him at 147, he's much stronger. He's healthier. He got a new trainer. He's in Vegas. He's in the fight town. He's in that environment and atmosphere. You can't tell me that's not going to make a difference. And he's 5'11", reaching every day. He, he's he's, he's a, one of the worst nightmares for a guy like Boots in us. Worst nightmare. Now, I still think you got to give Boots the advantage. Don't get, me, don't get me wrong, but what I'm telling you is it ain't going to be no damn Roman Villa type fight. Boots in is going to get hit. This, this, this Mario Barros, is, he's had life breathe back into his career. He's, he's got his weight where he wants. There's no weird rehydration clauses on him. He's not with Virgil Hunter, the, the whisperer who's in his ear. Hey, man, you know, you're ready to return. You need to make a change. Nobody want to hear that when you're out in the ring getting your damn nose blasted off your face. He's in there with the right team, and he's got the right the right plan. And uh, I, just, I definitely think Mario Barrios and Boots is, is a fight that's a lot harder than what some people are saying, okay? But when you come down and look at the racket stack for Boots Sinners, I mean, outside of Virgil Ortiz and Mario Barrios, I mean, you know, Crawford, I, I really don't know what, what he can do, man. The only big name there is Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman doesn't seem to really want to fight him. Keith Thurman talking a good game, but he doesn't really seem to want to mess with Boots in this. But Keith Thurman gets an opportunity at Stanley Eunice, which Keith Thurman should pick up a little WBA goal. And then you could see a Boots in this fight Crowley. Then now you got Thurman and Boots trying to unify their little IBF WBA goal. And then one of those guys go on to hopefully fight whoever has IB, whoever's the undisputed champion, which should be Crawford unless he drops the belt. So that being said, man, Keep on the lookout for this fight. I'm telling you, uh, Boots Ennis is the IBF interim world champion. You can't make me believe that when he has a guy, Cody Crowley, at number three, no number, no, no, number one and number two positions are vacant under the IBF, that they wouldn't push for that fight for him and Crowley, and they would be looking for him to go and fight outside of the organization. I just don't buy that. I don't buy it at all. Anyway, that being said, I guess we'll find out if what I'm saying is true. Y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans, all seven continents. I think Boots beats him. Whoever wins fights the winner of Thurman Stanley Eunice. And then that winner should go on to fight for Undisputed if Terrence Crawford still hanging around 147. And remember, we've, we, we've done deep dives on this. We do it all the time. But plans change. You know what I'm saying, people? As, as the racket stacks change, and fights, fight plans change, you know, the conversation changes and that's all we're doing right now right y'all keep cool in the breeze